Hi everybody, I'm DJ Sixsmith. You're watching The Sit Down. Got a really cool event coming to New York in just a little while. Georgina Bloomberg's here to talk about it. Nice Thanks. to meet you. Thanks for having me. How's everything going? Everything is great. We're excited. Nice. Yeah, so this should be a pretty awesome event uh, coming to Governor's Island. So how did this all come together and what's it going to be like for people? So the Global Champions Tour is actually a really cool tour that travels, actually it starts um, in Doha, Mexico City. Um, we have two stops in the U.S. now, Miami and now New York. It's the first time that there's been a horse show on Governor's Island. We've had polo matches before, but it's the first show jumping event. Um, and it's actually the inaugural New York Global Champions Tour. So it's going to be really exciting. Um, some of the best riders in the world are coming to compete for top prize money. And um, we're all just really excited to have a beautiful venue and obviously a beautiful backdrop. Were you surprised that there had never been an event at Governor's Island? Um, actually, I was. You know, not a lot of people know about Governor's Island. Yeah. Um, I've lived here all my life, and I've actually only been one time. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's a really cool island. It's very close to Manhattan, obviously, really easy to get to. Um, and hopefully, you know, the weather holds up, and we're going to have a really great event. Yeah, because, like, people do, like, concerts out there and stuff yeah. like that. But, yeah, whether it's polo or, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, relatively unknown, but really a cool space. Definitely. So you've been on horses your whole life. So yeah. when did you kind of know this was going to be your thing? Started riding when I was four and competing when I was six, um, and I fell in love with the competition right away. You know, I think every rider sort of starts with their love of ponies and the horses, and you know, love of the animal is sort of a must. But uh, I really was drawn to the competition. I love working hard at something and then sort of being in the spotlight and showing that off. And when I was 21, I sort of had to make a decision as to whether I wanted to pursue this as a career and decided to turn professional and start expecting sponsorships and really devote my life to it and haven't looked back. I think that's awesome. I think it's also cool that you just leaned right into the competition like at such a young <laughs> age. And yeah. I guess it kind of you kind of figured out early on, like, are you about the competition or not? You clearly right. were about it. Yeah. So what was it like kind of just unpacking that part of your personality from a young age? Yeah, you know, I've always been competitive. I've always been into sports. Um, and I actually remember my first competition. I actually came in last. Oh, wow. uh, and I'm very grateful for that because that really fueled me to want to go home and figure out how to win and to work hard. And I remember the feeling of, you know, winning my first blue ribbon and my first competition and just loving that feeling and knowing that I wanted to keep working hard at it and keep going from there. It's amazing how you don't forget the losses, right? Right. They it's, just stick with you know, you. that's what makes the wins taste even better. Yeah, so because you've had all this success in your career, but you can still pinpoint that one moment in your career like that's pretty <laughs> fascinating when you think about it yeah absolutely and you know with our sport you're always going to lose more competitions than you're going to win um, the best rider in the world will tell you that too so um, I really use failure and my losses to drive me to want to win so you mentioned the fact that you turned pro at 21 but you were doing this like as you're doing school which I always find interesting in, in talking to Jessica Springsteen Jennifer mm -hmm. Gates like School's not an easy thing in general. You're balancing this whole career on top of it. So yeah. what was that part of your life like? Yeah, it's tricky because it's really, it's a year-round sport and it's really all consuming. You know, um, we ride six days a week. Um, we travel a lot. It's hard on the body. It's hard on the mind. It's hard on your social life. And it's difficult to balance anything else. Um, and, you know, doing school was really important to me. Um, actually, when you mentioned Jesse and Jen, mm -hmm. you know, we all went to college. Jen is actually currently in med school. Yeah, right. She's, you know, she's taking on a lot. Um, it's really admirable. And it's a hard balance. But I think when you really love something, Thing, you're willing to make sacrifices and willing to pursue it. So you've been in the city your whole life. You went to NYU. Mm -hmm. What sticks out in your memory about that time? You know, I loved NYU. Um, it was really the right fit for me. Obviously, growing up in New York City, um, it was a bit strange for you know, a lot of New Yorkers to go to NYU and to stay in the city and not travel and do anything else. But, um, you know, New York is really, it's my home. It's um, the place that I love the most. And I loved being able to sort of explore a different part of it. And um, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful that I chose it. I mean, with your career, you're going all over the world, but did you think about going somewhere <laughs> else for college, or was it always going to be New York? It was always going to be New York, you know. Um, I um, I think New York is just such a magical place, and um, it's, you know, it, it's something that's just in my blood. I've always loved being here. I've never thought about moving or being anywhere else. Um, you know, I say, I'll be born here, I'll die here. Um, this is just the greatest place in the world to grow up. You kind of have everything you need, because especially for you, you understand it's like you've been all over the world. Like, there's some cool places to go and <laughs> check out and hang out for a couple days, but but you come back home and you're like, all right, yeah. this is a pretty good situation. Yeah, but the more I travel, the more I love my home. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so speaking of all the travel, where are some places you've been for your competitions that have really just blown you away or just you remember for a specific reason? You know, we get to travel a lot to some pretty amazing cities, which is great. You know, we do shows actually for the Global Champions Tour, um, obviously in Miami and Paris and London, mm -hmm. and we get to go to some of the big cities. But some of the travel that I've done with the equestrian world is actually some of the smaller cities and some of the more random places that I wouldn't normally go for a vacation or um, to sightsee. And, you know, we've been to some really cool places, let's say, like up in Finland and mm. other places in Scandinavia that I would normally never go. But um, horse shows sometimes bring you to really cool places that you get to know some of the locals and get to know the community. Um, and it makes you see the city in a different way than you would if you were going as a tourist. What are the fans like over there? Because they're pretty passionate here in New York. What are they like overseas? They're great. You know, obviously show jumping is a bit bigger in Europe. Um, it's, you know, 
quite a well-known sport and uh, people follow it and um, go to watch it a little bit more than they do in the States. And that's one of the things that we're super excited about to have the show in New York is to hopefully you know, bring in some new crowds and to bring in some new fans that might have never been to a horse show and might leave wanting to pursue following it or maybe you know, a kid comes and wants to start riding. Um, but you know, exposing people to our sport is something that this show is really gonna do. For somebody like me that hasn't spent a lot of time watching your sport, what are the challenges associated with it? And just, just being on the horse physically, what is it like for you in terms of being in the moment? Because some people kind of get into that flow state where they're just in it and they're mm -hmm. doing it. But what are some of the challenges for you when you're actually in competition? There's a ton of challenges, obviously, with horseback riding. You know, you're an athlete, but you're also on another athlete. Right. You're, you're factoring an animal in. Um, and the animal can have a bad day. You can have a bad day. It's very different than, let's say, track or gymnastics, where it's just about you and your performance. And if you're healthy and, you know, performing well, you're going to go in and win. And with us, it's um, there's a lot of luck. Um, mm. You know, your horse can be in a bad mood. Your horse can have an injury. Um, you know, it's, it's a very different sport. And there's two athletes that you need to rely on. So um, it's a challenging sport. Obviously, Obviously, it's a bit dangerous, um, but it's something that um, you know I've always loved. It's um, it's physically a bit grueling, mentally. You know, we travel a lot. It can be a bit tiring, uh, but I've always loved it, and it's always been worth it for me. Yeah, and I think it's interesting to hear a horse called an athlete too, because some people <laughs> won't label a horse an athlete, but you obviously know given the time. So. How do you build that relationship with the horse? Because like you said, horse can be having a bad day. Right. You gotta find a way to execute. How do you deal with that? Yeah, no, horses are definitely athletes. Yeah. Um, our horses are incredible. Um, the way that they perform, the things that they do, they're just incredible creatures. But um, you know, the relationship with the horse is incredibly important. You can have the best rider in the world and the best horse in the world, and you put them together, it's not necessarily gonna equal a great partnership. Um, the relationship with the horse is very important. Um, building that, getting the trust from the horse, getting the communication correct is really important. Um, you can't just stick a rider on a horse and have them you know go in and compete well um, it takes a lot of time a lot of work at home and you have to build that relationship up